I'm here with Dr. Romano to complete the 2007 General Chemistry ADA test. Uh, this is going to be the first of two clips. Dr. Romano is going to have a part one and part two of this video. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm Professor of Organic Chemistry at Romano Scientific, and I'm the author of the Dad Destroyer book and the Orgo Man products. I'm going to go through with you a 2007 Gen Chem exam and show you how to do it. And then once you do the exam, get back to the Dad Destroyer book. In our latest edition, we have all the new type of questions. I would rate this on a scale of 1 to 10 in difficulty, 10 being very difficult, 1 being a joke. I represent this around a 5. I think this is sort of on the easier side. So don't take too much credibility if you know all these questions. There's a lot of things not covered. For example, there's no kinetics questions. I don't see any buffer questions. I don't see any really good electrolysis problems. So don't get too caught up in it. But at least it'll give you some idea of how to go about doing the problems. So save your money on any time tests. Learn the foundation, build the foundation, go through all the destroyer questions, which I personally done myself. And you should have no problem on the debt. All right, come on around and let's do this together. In the first problem, it says here that we have a 49 gram sample of sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and what does it contain? Now, the first thing we should do is you can see there's 49 grams and we have the weight of 98. So that's gonna represent a half a mole. So if you saw that from the beginning, it'll make things easier. So I'm gonna assume that you can say to me, if you had the grams, you divide it by the weight, we have a half a mole. Let's go through each one. It says choice A, we have one mole of sulfur atoms. As you can see what I've done here, and I wrote this out to save some time, I wrote down the given. We have a half a mole of H2SO4. There is one mole of sulfur in one mole of the H2SO4. So that cancels out, and we're left with the moles of sulfur atoms. And notice we get a half. Choice A says one mole. So that's wrong. It's a half a mole. How about B? There's 16 grams of O atoms. Well, 0.5 moles of H2SO4. Notice the conversion factor. There's four moles of oxygen in one mole of the H2SO4. That cancels. And then there's 16 grams of O atoms in a mole of O atoms. Moles cancel out. And 0.5 times 16 is 8, 8 fours of 32 grams, not 16 grams, so B is out. How about C? Is there two grams of hydrogen atoms? Well, 0.5 moles of H2SO4, again, is two moles of hydrogen atoms in a mole of H2SO4, cancels out, one gram of the hydrogen atoms in a mole of hydrogen atoms, moles cancel, half of two is one, so there's only one gram. And C is wrong. Not doing so good, huh? How about D? Two moles of oxygen atoms. This is a long problem, I admit. Now, is there two moles of oxygen atoms? You have 0.5 moles of H2SO4 again. There's four moles of O atoms, or just O I wrote, in a mole of H2SO4. And that gives me the moles of the O atoms. And it's two moles. That would work. And then just for clarity, E, is there a mole of molecules? Well, we already saw 49 grams, when you divide it by the weight, was a half a mole of H2SO4 molecules. So there wasn't, a mo there wasn't one mole of molecules, there was only a half a mole, the molecules being H2SO4. So the correct answer was choice letter D. All right, I hope that um, explains that. Now, if it makes you feel better, that's the longest question of all, and it was planted at number one. All right, number two. Now, this next one is going to be a limiting reagent question. I did a limiting reagent question on a video. You might want to take a look at this. Now, they're going to give me nitrogen plus hydrogen, and we're going to get two moles of NH3. And then I first look to see it's balanced. It says that we have one mole of nitrogen and one mole of hydrogen. So what I do is I go off to the side and I write one mole of nitrogen, and they gave me one mole 
of hydrogen. And what I do is I write the word have, meaning this is what I have at the start. Since two moles are given, we know this is going to be a limiting reagent problem. And they say to you that one mole of each of these, nitrogen and hydrogen, are mixed and allowed to react according to this equation. I hope you recognize this equation as the Fema Haber process. What is the maximum number of moles of ammonia that could be made? And notice they just give you um, these fractions. Well, once we got the two moles, what you have to do is you have to do what I call a test for the limiting reagent. Now, what I like to do for the test is take the very first one they give you. It doesn't matter which one. So let's take the first one. So I write one mole of nitrogen and I do a test. I look at the stoichiometric relationship between the reactants. So here you have moles of nitrogen. There's one mole of nitrogen for every three moles of hydrogen. Crosses out moles. And now here's the trick. We get three moles of hydrogen and you write the word needed. That this is what's needed. Now, if you go back, how much hydrogen do you see? You only had one mole. So what does that tell you? That tells me that we, um, we, we have one mole, but we need three. So therefore, H2 limits. So hydrogen is the limiting reagent. So that means now we can start the problem and we know we're only going to be using the one mole of hydrogen. So let's do it. Now that we know the limiting reagent, the problem becomes easy. So all I do is say one mole of the hydrogen, and now we're on our merry way to look at the ammonia. You have moles of hydrogen, you have three moles of hydrogen for every two moles of the ammonia. And I hope you can see we're left with two thirds for the final answer. Choice A, you would get two thirds for the maximum number of moles of ammonia. All right. Relax. I realized there was two calculations. There's going to actually be three in the very early beginning of this exam, but that was an easy one. We have questions like that in the destroyer that I want you to look at. Now, the next question, it says that a flask weighs 95 grams when empty. When filled with 200 milliliters of a certain liquid, the weight is now 328. What volume in milliliters would a thousand grams of the liquid occupy. Now, here's the best way to do it. We know density of the liquid is mass over the volume. And all we're doing is we're changing the amount of grams and volume. So what I can do is set up a ratio. I can write mass of liquid over volume of liquid equals mass of liquid over volume of liquid. Now, what's the first mass of the liquid? Well, we know that the flask weighs 95, and then the total weight is 328. So the mass of the liquid would be the 328 minus the 95. And then the volume of liquid, as you can see, was 200 mLs. All right. Then... It says that what's the volume, so we don't know the other volume, but we know the mass is 1,000 grams. So all we're going to do is crisscross multiply. So what does that give me? It gives me the 328 minus 95 via the liquid equals 1,000 times 200. Or the V of the liquid is 1,000 times the 200 over 328 minus 95. And if you go to choice B, there's the 200 at the 1,000 at the top, 328 minus 95 for choice letter B. And a simple ratio proportion did the trick. All right, that's the first three questions. There'll be smoother seas ahead, relax. That's why it's very important to anticipate some good theory questions as well as questions that involve math. It says here that a, if three grams of a nitrogen oxygen compound is found to contain 3.22 grams of oxygen, what is the percent of nitrogen? Well, 
The percent of anything is equal to the part over the whole times 100. Well, looks like all I got to do is set it up. Well, first of all, we have 3 grams of the compound, and 2.22 of it is nitrogen. So, I'm sorry, 2.22 grams of it is oxygen. So, if you subtract the difference of 3 minus the 2.22, that would give you the percentage of, or the grams of the nitrogen. So, we started off with 3 grams of the compound and 2.22 grams is oxygen. So, the difference would be nitrogen. That's the part. The whole thing weighed 3.00. Don't forget to times it by 100. So it's 3.00 minus 2.22 over 3 times 100. And that was a very simple percent composition question. Okay, that was easy enough. Problem number 45 is a sure bet question. It says we have a 10 liter sample of oxygen at 100 Celsius and one atmosphere. And we're going to cool it to 27 Celsius and expand it until the pressure is 0.5 atmospheres. Find the final volume of the oxygen. To do any of these problems, we use what's called the combined law. P1, V1, T1 equals P2, V2, T2. Now, in the destroyer book, we go over all the different laws. For instance, the relationship between V and T is Charles's law, and the relationship between P and V is Boyle's law. Make sure you can do those type of questions. Now, as long as we're in the same units, so if pressure is here as in atmospheres, it's got to be here in atmospheres. If this volume is in milliliters, this is in milliliters. The only little thing you got to remember is the temperature must be in Kelvin. So don't forget, the Kelvin is Celsius plus 273. So the T1, the first temperature I'm given, is 100 Celsius. So I'm going to get 273. And then add that, and we get two, 373 Kelvin. And then the T2 is going to be 27 degrees plus 273. And that gives me 300 K. All right, let's put the numbers in. What's the first pressure that I see? And that's one atmosphere. And the volume, it says, it's 10 liters. And T1 was 373. Then P2 um, is going to be 0.5. V2 is, I believe, that's what we want. And then T2 is the 300. So all we need to do is crisscross. So this gives me the 300 times 1 times 10 equals 373 times 0.5 V2. And then if you divide it by this, that cancels these out, I get 373 and 0.5 in the bottom. So if we go back, you're going to look for in the numerator a 10, a 1, and a 300 in choice D, and in the bottom is the 0.5 and the 373. That's a straightforward, simple calculation. All right, that's the way you would do that. Now, the one I like better than that is the one in the destroyer, where we're collecting gases over water. That's a little more challenging. Or um, collecting gases at STP. So have a look at those questions. All right, finally, a theory question. When the volume of a gas is decreased at constant temperature, the pressure increases. Um, because why? Well, first of all, pressure and volume has to deal with Boyle's law. They're inversely related. If the pressure was doubling, the volume would be halving if you're at constant temperature. So what's happening here is the volume is decreasing. So you're going into a smaller area of space and you're putting pressure on it. The pressure is increasing because if you're going smaller and smaller and smaller, you are banging those molecules together in a smaller compartment. So therefore, choice E, they would strike the container 
more often. They would hit the walls more often because there's a smaller space. Think of it as if you have a house or a dorm room that's 300 square feet dorm, dorm room. That's a pretty big dorm room. But what if now I say to you, we're gonna partition that dorm room and now you only have 100 square feet. Well, now you might be hitting into the walls yourself because now you have a smaller confine of space. Um, you're not gonna affect the speed. Um, for the simple reason is it says constant temperature. And if you remember, temperature is nothing more than the measure of the average kinetic energy. So that's out. Um, it's not going to become heavier or lighter. You're not going to create mass. If you remember, you know, matter can't be created nor destroyed under normal conditions. All right, let's go to 47. Oh, Dr. Romano, let's move on to 47 in the second half of the video. Okay, I'll do 47. We'll pick that up in the next half of the video. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. Bye.